Hey guys, my name is David Bond and today we're checking out a really cool piece of software from Jam Origin uh, which is called MIDI Guitar. So the idea of this software then um, is that it translates whatever you play through your guitar straight through your regular sound card and it converts it into MIDI in real time. Um, so there's quite a lot of really cool things that we can do with this. Um, but I want to give you a quick overview of how it works and show you a few different applications of how you might use that. All right, so I thought I'd show you the software interface then first of all. Um, it's a really intuitive piece of software, um, so I'm not going to give you a complete walkthrough of all the features and settings. Um, it is available as a demo uh, from the Jam Origin website for both Windows and Mac, um, so you might just want to get hold of the free demo and just have a play about with that. Uh, you can play through basically any sound card that just gets a dry signal from your guitar. Um, you might have noticed in the intro video, um, I was playing through a whole bunch of different synth sounds. Um, there was like a choir pad in the background, some drums, uh, a synth bass, and I was playing with kind of an electric piano type of lead sound. Um, everything that you heard there was tracked using MIDI guitar, uh, with the exception of the drums. You could track drums with MIDI guitar, um, there's no reason why you couldn't, it's just that it would be quite difficult because you'd have to kind of relearn the guitar um, so that you're playing drum parts on it, not guitar parts, if you see what I mean. So I used some pre-programmed drum loops there. So let's get on to the software then. Um, this is the main page, you've got three different sections, Essentials, Advanced and Plugins. Um, and in the, the first section here, audio settings, we just set up where it's going to take the sound from. In this case, my Alesis sound card and also where it's routing the output. Same device. Uh, we can set the sample rate and the buffer size. Um, slightly higher settings end up with more latency. Uh, so I've got it on the lowest setting for the lowest latency at the moment. Um, if I just play kind of briefly so you can hear what kind of latency you can expect. <laughs> You can hear my guitar there as well, my dry guitar signal, and there's a piano directly after it. Maybe if I just play up and down some notes for a while so you can hear what the tracking's like. Um, if you hear the piano drop out, then it's dropped a note. So yeah, as you can hear, uh, the tracking is pretty good. Um, you can set the sensitivity over here. Higher sensitivity settings result in more notes being picked up, but um, you've also got the trade-off there that you'll get more misfires. So 100%. You can hear there's quite a lot of misfires there where it's picking up notes where I don't want. Um, if I do something like a tapping thing, The tracking is pretty insane for that, but the problem is you're going to get a lot of misfires from you know, these type of noises that you accidentally hit. Um, so slightly more conservative sensitivity ratings, settings I should say, um, tend to work better. Here we set the pitch bend range, um, so it'll track bends on the guitar, um, and you just set how many frets worth of bend you want it to recognize. Uh, reset and panic buttons for the MIDI. Um, and then here we've got some visualizations. You can either have a waveform, as you can see at the moment is what I've got going on. Or you can have a tuner, a guitar tuner, which will just help you tune up. Um, it's going to track better if you're in tune um, and it'll sound less horrific to your own ears. Uh, it's a good chromatic tuner. Um, it'll tell you what note you're playing and also if it's sharp or flat. Uh, the output section is down here then, and this is where we set what you want your guitar to sound like um, and also where you want the signal to go. Um, so in the in instrument section here, um, you'll notice there's a few uh, synths and test sounds that you get with MIDI guitar. You get two synths, analog synth and an FM synth. And then everything below this line here is my VST instruments. 
Um, so when you set it up, it scans all your VST folders on your computer and imports all of your VST instruments into MIDI Guitar, which is really cool because you can use MIDI Guitar as a standalone client for your VST instruments. So as you can see here, I can open up Absinthe, for example, um, and at the moment I've got it set to a flute. <laughs> It's kind of a flute ensemble type of sound. Let me just play again for a little while so you can hear the tracking when it's sending to VSTs. So there's some slight issues that you can hear with here, which isn't actually tracking issues. It's more that the uh, attack time of the, the synth sound, the VST sound, is a little bit too slow. So that when you do quicker notes, you get this very jarring stuttering effect. Um, so it's worth pointing out that that's not actually a fault with MIDI guitar. It's just that I would set up my attack settings a little bit better to suit this particular usage. And um, cool, right, so that's the VST section. You can send it to whatever VST you've got. Um, it's not sending it to a door or anything like that at the moment. It's literally just using this standalone client. And the next section, we've got an amp effect type of section. Um, so I could use, for example, Guitar Rig, Native Instruments Guitar Rig. Um, and I'll probably just take out Absinthe because we don't want to send it to two places at once. Um, and then we can use uh, native Instruments Guitar Rig um, to just get some guitar sounds. I haven't fiddled about with Guitar Rig too much so I'm not going to dwell on that because um, it's not sounding too great at the moment. So there's um, using the amp effects section. Other than that we've got a MIDI output which is basically just deciding where you're sending the MIDI signal itself. So we're not talking about the output of the VST instrument, we're talking about the raw MIDI data. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what MIDI is, uh, it's essentially just a way for the computer to recognize pitches, uh, changes in pitch, changes in volume, uh, expression, and so on, in a digital format, in, in binary code, basically. So we can set this to go to a range of different outputs. Um, you can route it to a bus, for example. Um, and then at your uh, receiving end, at whatever piece of software you're wanting to send the MIDI to, you would set the input to bus 1. So if I set the MIDI output to bus 1 and I wanted to route it to band in a box, for example, in band in a box I'd set up my input to be bus 1 and it would pick up the MIDI coming from here. Cool. All right, that's pretty much it on this page. There is some advanced settings. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. Um, but as you can see, it just enables you to get a little bit more in depth with some of the settings. Um, you can switch on and off pitch bends here. Um, you can set whether or not you want it to shift the pitch. At the moment, I've got it setting up an octave. So you can hear. Um, actually, I haven't got an output set up, which is why you can only hear my guitar. So if I set that to the piano, again, you can hear. The note that it's playing is one octave above my guitar. If I bring that back down to unison, we'll get literally the same note that I'm playing. Um, now we've just got some different settings to do with velocity, um, some instrument output settings, and settings for the amp effects outputs. Um, you might want to check out the MIDI machines. There's pretty cool stuff going on in the MIDI machines, which is a new feature. Um, it's very much still in a beta stage, this uh, piece of software. Um, I'm assuming that they're probably going to sweeten up the, the visual um, interface here in time. But it enables you to put filters on, scale filters, harmonizers, um, all sorts of different things that just enable you to really get in control of the, the MIDI data that's coming out of there. Cool, so that's the software interface then. Um, what I'm gonna do is just load up some of the bits of software and we can see how it integrates with other software too. All right, so I'm gonna show you very briefly integrating MIDI guitar uh, with a couple of different pieces of software. Um, on the left-hand side here, you can see Band in a Box, um, which is a really cool piece of software that lets you put in chord progressions and chord charts and it'll play it back for you using a range of different styles. So I'm going to use MIDI Guitar uh, to input MIDI information to Band in a Box, uh, which will then 
take that and use it as a melody um, as part of an arrangement. So as you can see here, I've got my MIDI output in MIDI, uh, MIDI guitar router to bus one. In Band in a Box, um, you can see that I've got the input coming from bus one two. So it's going to take any information that MIDI guitar gives it um, and record it if I tell it to do that. Um, so let's do that. It's coming up till Christmas when I'm making this video. Um, so let's have a go at this tune. All I want for Christmas is you. And I'm just going to play the melody and then I'll show you where it's stored it. So if I um, press record here, um, Band in a Box asks me if I want to record from the start of the song, which is exactly what I want to do. And it'll give me a counting. And so on, you get the idea. Um, it actually went off the screen there, so I had to try and remember the rest of the melody. Um, but as you can see here, uh, Band in the Box asked me if I want to keep the take, which I'll do. I'll bring up the lead sheet window, or the melody window, um, and you can see all the information that I put in um, is taken from MIDI Guitar. Um, so that's pretty cool. Once it's there, you can quantize it and just straighten things up a little bit and get rid of any misfires that you didn't want everything's been stored so that's pretty cool um, just quickly as well I might show you using this with uh, a door um, so here you can see studio one um, which is my main door um, and this is just the intro jam that I played for you guys <laughs> So it's just a backing track um, and I've got three parts, uh, drums from Stylus RMX, bass from Trillion and uh, then some synth sounds, which I say choir sound from Native Instruments Contact 5. So if I just get rid of this bass track for example um, and I'll route mini guitar to bus 2. Um, so hopefully now we should be able to hear. <laughs> we can we can hear this bass sound coming from trillion here so I'm going to turn the monitoring off because we get a little bit of latency um, with monitoring here I'm also just going to close band in a box because I don't want to hear the, the band in a box sounds while we're doing this cool so um, if I just start tracking this then and then we'll see what's happened <laughs> fires going on a little bit of straightening out is needed so I'll press Q it quantizes that there we go all nice in time I just need to delete any misfires and neaten things up a bit um, so that's pretty much a wrap then MIDI guitar really awesome piece of software um, surprised at the quality of the tracking um, and also got to remember that this is only in beta mode at the moment um, so things are only going to get better but even at the outset this is looking fantastic um, I should point out that you don't need any kind of modifications to your guitar this is just a regular um, Sir Modern uh, there's no MIDI pickup or anything like that it's literally just taking my analog guitar signal and converting it to MIDI so go check it out, jamorigin.com, get yourself the free demo and see what you think yourself.